Hi, my name is Claire Wong. I'm a 2019 graduate of Duke University. I majored in environmental sciences and policy with a minor in economics. I had been interested in environmental issues since I was a little kid, always interested in animals and environmental conservation. In high school, I was lucky to volunteer for a local clean energy advocacy organization and realized this is something that I wanted to dedicate my life and career to. So coming to Duke, I already knew that I wanted to focus on climate change and energy, and it just happened to be that there was a perfect major already in place for me. The environmental science and policy degree was phenomenal training for me. It was a fantastic mix of policy applied and technical and scientific knowledge. That combined with having such a vibrant community of students and faculty and administrators who are interested in tackling the climate challenge made for a, a truly unparalleled educational experience here. I was deeply involved in student climate advocacy and activism. Being a part of Duke Climate Coalition really made me realize and believe in the change that all of us can make. This was frankly one of the most educational experiences and, and formative life experiences that I've had and has helped prepare me very well for the career that I have now in the U.S. State Department working on climate topics. Claire is a senior policy advisor to Special Envoy Kerry and then in the pathway between Duke and there she went to Oxford University for a couple of years to be a Rhodes Scholar. I had never imagined this to be my life trajectory. The idea of being a Rhodes Scholar had not even crossed my mind when I stepped onto this campus. And I was lucky to have a really wonderful network of, of advocates and mentors for me who encouraged me to apply for this position. I definitely encourage anybody listening to, to this video to do the same and to believe in yourself uh, and to at least throw your hat in the ring. Um, because there are so many people in the world who, who might want to say no, you should not be the first one to say no to yourself um, because you never know what you'll be able to achieve as long as you try. Uh, that's, I think, especially true for the people of color, and for women, and other underrepresented groups. I think it's really special to be back on Duke's campus and thinking about everything that I have learned and how much I grew as a student here. I can definitely remember some of those critical lessons and it feels like even though it's only been three years since I graduated, a lot has changed uh, in large part thanks to the training that I received while I was here. In order to achieve our climate objectives, we have to transform the global economy at a speed and a scale that has never been done before. Uh, and that is one of the most challenging realities of the job that I have, the job that we all have today. But this is not only a challenge for all of us, it's also an opportunity to build a world where people are healthier, more resilient, more robust, and to build a world that addresses the climate injustices and broader societal injustices that the world has faced today. So as students are out there thinking about making their own climate commitment, what is your advice? Organize, <laughs> agitate, and advocate. I think all climate work is advocacy work. It's clear that we know what the solutions are by and large, and the most important thing is to get it done and get it done quickly. My current role in the State Department revolves around working with partners to make sure the political and diplomatic wins are in favor of implementing solutions, as well as adapting to climate change and addressing the impacts that we're already seeing around the world. We simply can't imagine being prepared for a future without taking climate into account. And that's why it's so important to get smart on these topics now and to make sure that we bring those lessons forward in our work for the decades to come.